Hey everybody, Coach Toolshed here, and today I'm going to be making a video that I didn't really think I was going to be making this week. I wasn't really planning on talking about Fallout 76. I was going to give you guys a bit of a reprieve because we're going to be hitting it hard when the beta comes out next week, of course, and in 10 days we got Red Dead Redemption 2 coming out. So I was going to sort of give you a bit of a break with the Fallout talk. I know I've been hitting it hard for the last few months, and especially in the last week or so. But as it turns out, there's some stuff that I need to go over here because there's some information that's come out and there's some sort of new arguments that I see popping up all over the place that are just really sort of ridiculous in my mind. So I wanted to discuss these things. And the first thing I want to talk about is the general conversation that sprouted up in the week or so since we got that footage from the Greenbrier media event that Bethesda had to showcase Fallout 76 for their handpicked YouTubers. And we've seen a lot of different stuff come up. So earlier in the week we saw, first off, these guys came out and they talked about how they totally weren't biased by being flown out and being wined and dined and being given private parties and none of that was biased to them in any way. And some of them gave some critique of the game, to be fair. There's a guy named Gopher who's actually been ripping the game a new one over the last week. He's been really harsh about the game, and I've seen a couple other channels that have given some pretty scathing reviews of the game, but for the most part, what we got from the Fallout-centric channels was pretty much what we expected. They actually didn't come out of the event sounding too excited, but they kept talking positively about it, and at the end, the end result for most of these guys were, I'm really excited to get back into the world. You know, it has some issues, but they're going to fix it, I'm sure, because it's Bethesda, and they're going to move on their way. And now, some of them did get kind of critical, and there's been some nitpicks here and there, which I said there would be. We, we knew that they had to throw some stuff at us. And so what we started seeing towards the end of last week, right before the stress test went into the hands of some Xbox players, is that some of them started putting out videos where they were backtracking a little bit and talking about, oh, well, maybe here's some problems that I have here. I watched some more footage and here's some stuff that I've seen that might be an issue with the game. And of course, this has led to a lot of conversation. But one thing we kept hearing from these guys coming out of the event was how they could tell right away, even though, yes, we could see the lag, we could see the frame rate drops on the screen in the footage they were showing, which, of course, Bethesda assures us will be totally fixed in seven days. But one thing was pretty consistent from a lot of the Fallout-centric channels that covered this was they kept saying that this game was a noticeable graphical upgrade from Fallout 76, just like Todd said. Despite the lag, forget all that, that's going to get fixed. But they all pretty much were saying... That the graphic, I, I heard the word breathtaking quite often. They talked about the graphical upgrade that they all noticed. And I had a problem with that. I had, I, because I was looking at the same footage and I'm like, I'm not seeing this graphical upgrade that you claim to be seeing. What I see is a lot of brightly splashed colors on the screen that are sort of tricking your mind into thinking that there's more going on. But if you actually look at the graphical fidelity, it didn't look any better. And I said, one week ago, I said, I'd really like to see a technical breakdown of this game. I want to see where this 16 times graphical enhancement that Todd was hyping on the stage at E3. I want to see where exactly those numbers are coming from. And so over the weekend, I started seeing some stuff pointing me to watch a Digital Foundry video. Now, you can say what you want about Digital Foundry, but for the most part, they're pretty accurate with their technical breakdowns. And what they said when they analyzed the footage that we saw from the Greenbrier event, what they found is that it's not a graphical upgrade at all from Fallout 4. In fact, it's a graphical downgrade. They said that the resolution was barely hitting 75% of the resolution that we saw from Fallout 4 back in 2015. And as we all know, even in 2015, Fallout 4 was no graphical powerhouse. Now, I know some of you are already angrily typing and saying, Coach, that's an early build of the game. You can't judge it by that. That's not the point I'm making here. You may think that's the point, but it's not. The point is that the people who went to the event, a lot of them stressed that they right away noticed this graphical upgrade, which we know now, in fact, doesn't exist. Now, of course, if you can make the argument that the bright colors on the screen makes it more vibrant and therefore more pleasing to the eye, and yeah, I can, I can agree with that. See, I live in a part of the country where about an hour north of me, we have some mountains. 
And in the fall, especially at this time of year in particular, we get a lot of tourists who come up and look at the mountains when the leaves change color. They go turn all red and yellow and orange, the same sort of color scheme that we saw from Fallout 76. And people come here, they don't, they don't flock there in the, in the summertime or the springtime when it's all green and brown. No, they flock here in the fall when it's all brightly colored because it's more pleasing to the eye. However, reality doesn't have graphical enhancements. The resolution of the real world doesn't change between fall and summer. Just the color palette does. And that was my argument last week that I think it's just the color palette that is tricking people's eyes into thinking that this is some sort of graphically superior game when in fact it's just Fallout 4. I still don't know where this 16 times enhancement is. Now it could come in the final project. There, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and try to argue with people who want to say, well, this isn't the final product. This is an old build, and that's fine. But my point is that these people were saying that the build that they played, they could see the, they could see the obvious graphical enhancements, despite the lag. And that's been pretty much blown out of the water. So what else were they sugarcoating? Well, we also got the stress test this week. And so a lot of people got the game in their hands. Now, I see a lot of people running their mouths about it, but of course, you're not allowed to talk about it. You're not allowed to discuss the, uh, what happened in the test. You're not allowed to discuss your experience, anything that you did, your impressions. You're not allowed to post commentary or anything else about the test itself. Now, that doesn't stop some people from posting and giving their impressions, but the NDA was so strict that it didn't even want you to have other people in the room with you while you played. In fact, it said you couldn't even leave the room with the controller unattended. They didn't want the game running without you specifically being there. So anyone who's running their mouth about the NDA is in fact breaking the NDA, but that's besides the point. My point is, is that the conversation coming out of the stress test is what you see is like, oh, well, the people who did the stress test, they're generally favorable about it. They're really, you know, they're positive about the game coming out of the stress test. And the thing is, you're not talking to an unbiased population there. You're talking to people who were so convinced to buy this game that they went out more than a month before the game came out in order to pre-order it. And they got to stress test the game, sure, on Xbox, but the group of people who would be inclined to be negative towards the game is not going to exist, very in a very high percentage at least, amongst the people who were so convinced to buy this game. Some of them probably pre-ordered it after, directly after E3, and at the very least we know that they pre-ordered it more than a month before the actual launch date of the game. So these are people that were already inclined to be excited for this game. It's not an accurate representation of what it will actually feel like when the general public gets out, when non-biased reviewers get this game in their hands. Because I saw some people talking about this game, some very well-respected YouTubers, especially a very well-respected reviewer, someone who a lot of people cite, and he did a podcast this weekend, and he was smashing the game up and down. He had nothing good to say about the footage that he saw. Now, of course, once again, that's not the final build. I know that. But I think that people are kind of living in this bubble where they think that, oh, well, because this group here is positive about the game, therefore that proves that this game is actually great and it's going to be a success. But you have to remember the demographic of people that you're talking about. And feeding directly into this, I saw a video over the weekend from one of the hand-picked Bethesda YouTubers, someone who does Bethesda content pretty much exclusively. In fact, I couldn't really find too much on his channel at all going back for years that wasn't Bethesda related. I mean, you could keep scrolling, I guess. But this is a guy who's been doing hype for this game since before we even knew that it was called Fallout 76. Before E3, you can go back to May and this individual is hyping the game up. The only discernible reason being why you would hype a game that you don't even know the name of would be that it's a Bethesda product and you're a Bethesda channel and the people who subscribe to you are invested in Bethesda. So this guy put up a video this weekend and in it he pretty much denounced people like me, not specifically of course, but people who have been down on the game and he denounced us as the vocal minority. And the reason why he said this is he conducted a poll of his own subscribers where about roughly 25% 
of his subscriber base responded to his poll. So the most engaged segment of his player base responded to his poll. And his findings were not surprising if you know anything about polling. And what he found was that it was a very small percentage of people who were actually directly negative about the game, who were fully down on the game. And he found the overwhelming majority of people were hyped or optimistic about the game. And the word he used in this video was, he, that was evidence that people like me are the vocal minority, basically saying that we can just be dismissed and our arguments just don't matter because we're, we're such a small segment of the gaming audience that we really don't matter. But the fact is, you can't take a poll from people who are subscribed to a channel that puts up daily hype videos for Fallout 76 on a channel that does only Bethesda content and has been doing it for years and suggest that that is an unbiased group that you're polling. That's frankly absurd. And for you to use the word evidence as if that's some sort of hard proof that people aren't really complaining about this game is just a few wackos. That's being completely disingenuous. Would you like me to give you an example? I'm going to give you a political example, but I'm not trying to get political here, and I certainly don't want any political commentary down in the comment section. But I'm going to bring up an obvious political example, which should prove this point dramatically. So, if Donald Trump had a rally, and you talk to the people who attended his rally, people who took time out of their day to go and attend this event, to go and show their support, these are the people who would be his subscribers, in a way. If you went and talked to these people at his event, and you did a poll of them, and you asked, would you like to see a second term from Donald Trump? Or would you like to see them change the laws and Barack Obama to come back for a third term? Well, what do you think the polling results would be for his audience? Do you think they might, maybe, perhaps, be on his side? And that the people who would vote for Obama would be in the severe minority? Don't you think that that might be the case? And let's flip it around. What if Barack Obama was giving a speech and it was all his supporters in the crowd? And you ask those people, would you like to see them change the laws? And would you like to see a third term from Barack? Or would you like to see more of this Donald Trump? Well, what do you think they would say? Of course, they would be the exact inverse. This isn't rocket science. And for you to wave your poll in people's nose, and I have seen a shocking amount of people trying to use this particular person's poll as evidence that people shouldn't be complaining about this game because a poll on a Bethesda-centric Fallout channel that's been hyping this game since legitimately May that those people are also in fact hyped for the game. Could you believe it? And just a quick side note about the whole NDA that the stress test is under. Now, once again, I'm not going to discuss anything about the stress test, but I will say this. Isn't it odd that the people who played four hours of the game aren't allowed to talk about it and post video, but people who only played three hours of the game after they were wined and dined by Bethesda and got to meet their old buddy Pete Hines, they're, they're able to upload all the footage that they captured and they're able to talk about it quite freely the footage that they played i just think that that's a little bit odd that the people who played longer than the people at the greenbrier event are not allowed to speak of it just thought i'd throw that out there as something to chew on i think that's a little bit odd don't you because i sure would love to discuss the game but i can't i would love to discuss the game but we're gonna have to wait for that so that's all i got for this i mean I, to me some of this stuff is pretty obvious but obviously stuff is not clear to everyone on the internet but until next time i'm coach toolshed please let me know what you guys think down in the comments below i'm sure there's going to be pay people still angry with me about the last video because it just seems to keep coming but i'm going to try to keep quiet about this game i'm going to let it speak for itself when more people actually get their hands on it. We'll see how it goes. So again, I'm Coach Toolshed. Please subscribe if you want to stay in tune with the channel going forward. And as always, keep it turned to 11.